Welcome yogi friends. My name is Erin and this is an all levels vinyasa flow class. I'm replacing my normal live class for Wednesday, February 17th. If you have two blocks um, and a blanket, one or both of those might be helpful for our practice today with our focus on pigeon pose variations. We'll begin today on the backs. Finding your blocks if you have them, and if you don't have blocks, that's okay too. Draw the soles of the feet together and place the blocks just outside the outer hips at the right height for your body. And then pull the heels a bit closer to the perineum. Let the shoulders relax down and back. Arms can be spread wide, palms up. Or for a bit more of a chest opener, you can begin with prana mudra arms, bending the elbows. And if you find that variation, keep the abdominals slightly engaged so the lower back isn't arching here. When you find your shape, begin to settle in. Shut down the eyes. And draw your attention to the breath. As you begin to connect to your breath, breathing in and out through the nose, use your exhales to let the hips soften and open to the sides. And begin to match the length of your inhales and exhales. Over the next few rounds of breath, tap into a piece of breath you can maintain when we connect asana and pranayama, postures and breath control. At the bottom of your next exhale, engage ujjayi pranayama, yogic victory breath. And if you're newer to ujjayi, create a slight constriction in the back of the throat. Keep the breath moving through the nose until you begin to hear an oceanic vibration with each inhale and exhale. And if you're newer to ujjayi or it's not feeling good today, just begin to activate any other deep diaphragmatic intentional breath. On the inhales, controlling the flow of air all the way to the belly. And on the exhales, controlling the flow of air up and out. Begin to feel the abdominal muscles engage. And if you found your ujjayi pranayama, soften it so that just you or someone right next to you could hear it. Take about five more rounds of breath this way, in and out through the nose. And I'll leave space here to set an intention for your practice if you like. An intention can be a goal, a feeling, something you'd like to bring with you or cultivate when you leave your mats at the end of our practice today. When you have that intention, bring one hand to the heart, one hand to the belly and take a deep round of breath here, deepest breath of your day. And then open the eyes as we prepare to move. Use the hands to lift the legs, slide those blocks aside for now. And with an inhale, draw the knees into the chest, leave the head and shoulders on the mat and begin to rock left and right. Starting to awaken, the hip flexors, stretching through the glutes. Keep your breath moving here. The next time you come through center, take an inhale, lift the chest, and bring knees to forehead, tuck the chin for Apanasana, wind releasing pose. Pull the belly in and up, roll the shoulders down and back and point the toes. Starting to feel some heat behind the navel. One more inhale and exhale, release. Plant both feet, walk the left heel as close to the buttocks as you can, knee over ankle, and then lift the right foot, crossing right ankle over left thigh. Flex your right toes a lot, arms alongside the body for reclined pigeon, Raja Kapotasana variation. Let that right hip open out to the side. 
And you can stay right here. If you're feeling open, option to lift that left foot, catch behind your left leg with the hands. Wherever you're at, keep shoulders relaxed. A couple deep breaths in your variation. Take one more inhale. And on the exhale, lower the left foot if it lifted. Unhook the right foot and plant the right foot firmly, walking the heel toward the buttocks, knee over ankle. And with an inhale, lift the left ankle, cross the ankle over the right thigh, and then begin to let that left hip open out. Keep those left toes flat, keeping the knee joint healthy. And you can stay right here. Option to lift the right foot, catch behind the right thigh, and then let shoulders and head relax back to the mat. Take a couple deep breath cycles here, feeling that hip continue to open out with each exhale. Take one more inhale. Exhale, unhook the left leg, plant both feet, hands behind the thighs, and begin to rock and roll along the spine. We'll take a few rounds this way. Eventually, we're moving toward tabletop. When you're ready, option to cross the legs, use some momentum, roll over the feet, and then step back to tabletop. When you find your tabletop pose, Establish your strong alignment here. Shoulders over wrists and hips over knees. Pull the belly in and up and keep your breath moving. With an inhale, drop the belly, lift the chest, Marjoriasana. Exhale, tuck the chin, pull the belly in and up, Vitalasana. Inhale, arching the spine, finding cow pose. Exhale, round in the back, tucking the chin for cat. Take a few more on your breath cycle. Feel free to linger anywhere that feels good. Option to find movements shifting to the right and through center to the left for lateral cow cats. Eventually, meeting back in neutral tabletop, long spine, and then knit the ribs in, pull up behind the navel, press the floor away. One more inhale here, and then tuck the toes, send the hips up and back for our first down dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. From your down dog, begin to bend one knee and then the other, pedaling out the heels. And start to draw your breath to the backs of the legs, opening through the hamstrings. Arms are straight and strong here. Eventually find some stillness, send the heels energetically toward the mat. They don't need to touch. And from your down dog, inhale, roll forward to plank. Option to lower the knees here. If the knees are lowered, they're slightly behind the hips. Either way, building strength, pull the sternum forward, push back through the heels, squeeze the leg muscles. One more inhale, exhale up and back, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Inhale, roll forward to plank. Exhale up and back. This time, inhale to roll forward. And on the exhale, lower knees, chest, chin. So the buttocks is lifted here, Ashtanga Namaskar. Draw the elbows back to the ribs, press the toes down, and engage the belly muscles. If this feels uncomfortable, you can always slide fully to the belly here instead. With your next inhale, slide forward, straighten the legs, and hover the hands. Classical Cobra, push the toes to the mat, lift the palms up, 
Take another inhale, lift another row of ribs off the mat. Exhale, press up through knees or plank and back to downward facing dog. Adho Mukha Svanasana. From your down dog, inhale, right leg high. Exhale, bend the knee, stack the hips, scorpion dog. Kick that right heel to the buttocks, gaze under the left armpit, and drop your right shoulder. With an inhale, right leg straight back, and exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, forward to plank. Exhale, knees, chest, chin. Inhale for cobra, slide forward, lift the palms. Exhale, up and back. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Inhale, lift the left foot high. Exhale, bend the knees, stack the hips, scorpion dog. Look under the right armpit, maybe catch that left foot in your gaze. Lower the left shoulder. And with an inhale, left leg straight back. Exhale, down dog. One more inhale here. Exhale, lower to the knees, legs together, and send the hips back. Balasana, child's pose. Reach the arms back, relax the forehead and jaw, and come back to your breath. Throughout our practice today, feel welcome to find child's pose or tabletop at any point, especially if the breath grows shop choppy or shallow. With your next inhale, bring the palms forward, up to the knees, tuck your toes, and once more, send the hips back. Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Inhale, gaze forward, up on the toes. Exhale, tiptoe toward the hands, fingers spread wide. Lift up from the perineum and navel. And we'll meet in a forward fold at the top of the mat. Uttanasana. Feet together, big toes touching, or feet hips distance apart here. Option to clasp hands behind the back. And if that works for you, pull the fists up and overhead. And use that to draw the weight further toward the toes and shift your gaze up between the legs. A few deep breaths in your variation. And if you found that arm bind with control, let the arms hang heavy, spread the toes wide. And with an inhale, bend the knees, begin to roll up, press through the feet, and head and shoulders will come last here. We'll meet standing tall in Tadasana, mountain pose. Reach down through the fingers, lift up through the top of the head, and breathe. Find that full body engagement. Plant through all four corners of both feet. Lift the kneecaps, feeling the quads grow strong. Roll the shoulders down and back. And pull the belly in. A couple deep breaths in your mountain pose. Good. And we'll meet here at the top of the mat. We'll put that all together, warming up the whole body with classical Surya Namaskar on the breath. And if you're newer to classical sun salutes, you're welcome to add extra breaths as you need. With an inhale, palms to heart center, Anjali Mudra. Exhale, shoulders back. Inhale, arms straight forward and up. Exhale, fold. Right foot back. Inhale, low lunge. Exhale, plant the hands, step back, down dog. Inhale, forward to plank, lower knees as you need. Exhale, knees, chest, chin, elbows back. Inhale, slide forward for cobra, hover the palms. Exhale, up and back, down dog. 
Left foot forward. Inhale, low lunge. Exhale, step to the top and fold. Inhale to rise, reach the fingers high. Exhale, heart center. Second side. Inhale to rise. Exhale, fold. Left foot back. Inhale, low lunge. Exhale, back. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Inhale, forward. Falakasana. Exhale, knees, chest, chin. Ashtanga Namaskar. Inhale, forward for Cobra. Lift the knees. Exhale, up and back. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Right foot forward. Inhale. Low lunge. Exhale, step up and fold. Inhale to rise, lift the gaze. Exhale, heart center. Inhale to rise. Exhale, fold. Right foot back. Inhale. Exhale, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Inhale forward, Falakasana. Exhale, knees, chest, chin. Ashtanga Namaskar. Inhale forward for Cobra, Bhujangasana. Exhale up and back, downward facing dog. Left foot forward, inhale, low lunge. Exhale, Uttanasana, fold. Inhale to rise, reach the arms high. Exhale, heart center. Last side. Inhale to rise. Exhale, fold. Left foot back. Inhale, low lunge. Exhale, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Inhale forward, Falakasana. Exhale, knees, chest, chin. Inhale forward, Bhujangasana. Exhale, up and back, downward facing dog. Right foot forward, inhale. Exhale, fold, Uttanasana. Inhale to rise. Exhale, heart center and release. Coming back to Tadasana, find your strong mountain pose. Reach down through fingers, root down through the feet and lengthen through the spine. Lightly squeeze the shoulders together and back and breathe. Two deep breath cycles here. Good, adding on. Inhale, out and up, palms touch. Exhale, swan dive forward. Inhale, half lift, pull the shoulders back. Exhale, step back to downward facing dog. Adho Mukha Svanasana. From down dog, inhale, right leg up and back. Exhale, bend the knees, stack the hips, scorpion dog. You can stay to move toward wild thing. Lift the right hand, rotate on the left foot and plant the right foot off the mat, reaching right arm overhead, finding a back bend here. And if you move toward wild thing, inhale back, three-legged dog. Exhale, knee to nose, step through for warrior two. Rotate that back foot. And inhale to rise, reach the arms wide. Exhale, drishti to the right. And then roll the right hip back, roll the left hip back, tuck your tailbone and reach through the fingers. Soften shoulder heads away from the ears. 
With an inhale, straighten the front leg. Exhale, reach to the right and bend for Trikonasana Triangle. It's a nice place for a block. Option to bring that right hand down to a block or anywhere along the leg. Or option for more intensity, reach those right fingers straight down, stacking left shoulder over right. Wherever you're at, pull the chest back, tuck the tailbone, becoming as flat as you can. Maybe gaze turns up toward that left thumb. Take one more inhale here. Exhale, stand back up, warrior two. Inhale, flip the front palm. Exhale, reverse the warrior. Right arm over the ear, left arm down the back leg. Keep that deep bend in the front knee and then find a side bend here, pulling the belly in so the lower back doesn't arch. Urdhva Virabhadrasana. Inhale back to warrior two. Exhale, cartwheel the hands, step back to plank. Inhale, roll forward. Exhale, lower chaturanga or to the belly. Inhale for cobra or up dog if you're ready. Exhale, up and back, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Inhale, left leg high. Exhale, bend the knee, scorpion dog. You can stay right here. Option to flip over to wild thing, lifting left arm up, planting left foot off the mat, and pushing the hips high. If you found wild thing, take an inhale, back to three-legged dog, left foot back, and then step knee to nose all the way through for Virabhadrasana two. Inhale, root through the feet to rise. Exhale, gaze to the left, open through the hips and reach through the fingers. Keep your breath deep here. Softening shoulders away from ears. Really press through the outer edge of that back foot. With an inhale, straighten the left leg. Exhale, reach to the left and bend for Trikonasana, triangle. Reach the right arm high and then option to find your block under the left hand or left hand anywhere along the leg except the knee joint. For added intensity, reach the left fingers straight down. Maybe gaze turns up. Imagining yourself like a sheet of paper here. How flat can you become? With your next inhale, rise up. Exhale, warrior two, gaze to the left. Inhale, flip the left palm. Exhale, reverse the warrior, right arm down the back leg, left arm overhead. Finding a side bend rather than a back bend here. Pull the chest back, pull the belly in. With an inhale, back to warrior two. Exhale, cartwheel the hands, step back to plank and find your flow, lowering chaturanga halfway or to the belly. Finding cobra or up dog. And we'll all meet back, Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. From down dog, take an inhale, press the floor away. Exhale, knees to the wide edge of the mat, big toes back, and sink the hips back for wide-legged child's pose, balasana. Bring the forehead to a block or the mat, and then bend the elbows, palms together, bringing thumbs toward the back of the neck. Keep sending the hips back and walking the elbows forward. With your next inhale, plant the palms, press up to hands and knees, 
And then we'll meet back in downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. From down dog, inhale, gaze between the thumbs. Exhale, step or hop to the top of the mat and fold. Inhale, half lift, shoulders down and back. Exhale, fold. Inhale to rise, arms out and up. Exhale, release. Bring the hands to the hips and take a big step back to face the long edge of your mat. For most of us, big toes need to be slightly in for outer edges of the feet to be parallel. Inhale, chest up, elbows and shoulders back. Exhale, fold forward, hinge from the waist. And then bring your hands down either to blocks or the mat. Either way, try to walk your hands back, tops of fingers in line with tops of toes, and then draw the crown of the head toward the mat. If the palms are firmly planted, bend the elbows 90 degree angle without letting elbows splay out. Press down with the palms, maybe the heels grow light. If you have full tripod headstand in your practice, you're welcome to go there, to lifting the legs, pushing toes and heels toward the ceiling, engaging all the leg muscles. But if you're working toward tripod headstand, with each exhale, lift behind the perineum, lift behind the navel, engage your bandas and breathe. And if you did find an inversion, joining us back in forward fold in the next couple of breaths. With an inhale, half lift, flat back. Exhale, fold. Hands to hips, slight bend in the knees. And with an inhale, rise all the way up. Exhale, release. Heel toe your feet together on the mat bringing the feet hips distance apart. We'll find standing pigeon for our balance, sticking with our theme of pigeon and hip openers. If you have a wall in your space and you'd like a little extra support, you can stand just close enough that your fingers can brush the wall. Otherwise, feet hips distance apart, hands to hips to start. Spread your left toes really wide, and with an inhale, lift the right foot, Exhale, hook the ankle over the left thigh and sit back. Bend that left knee as much as you can. Just like in chair pose, hips back, chest and gaze lifted, shoulders down and back. And you can stay right here. Option to bring palms to heart center. Really press through the left big toe. Gaze is soft and steady. To go further, Bend so much that your hands begin to come toward the floor. If you have blocks here, option to place blocks in front of you to lift the floor a bit, or hands can come all the way to the mat. If you have the full arm balance, you're welcome to go there. Otherwise, a couple of breaths here, lift the chest and gaze, sink the hips back. And if you did fold forward with control, begin to stand back up and take an inhale, reach the arms high, lift that right knee, exhale, release. Shake that out, let that go. And we'll find the second side. Hands to hips, spread the right toes wide. And with an inhale, lift the left foot. Exhale, left ankle over right thigh, sit back in your chair, pull up through the chest, shoulders down and back. Each exhale, sit a little further back, deepening the bend in that right knee. Standing pigeon variation. Option to bring palms to heart center. And if you're feeling really open in that left hip, Maybe sit back so much that you begin to reach hands toward blocks or the floor. Being patient here, you might feel tighter one side more than the other. Wherever you're at, keep your breath deep. And if you have the full arm balance, you're welcome to go there here.
And if you did find a fold with control, begin to raise back up. And then take an inhale, lift the arms, lift the left knee. Exhale, release. Good effort. Shake that out. We'll make our way back to the top of the mat and Tadasana Mountain Pose. With an inhale, arms out and up. Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, swan dive forward. Inhale, half lift, flat back. Exhale, step back to downward facing dog. Adho Mukha Svanasana. From your down dog, inhale, right leg up and back. Exhale, step through for warrior two. Rotate that back foot and inhale to rise. Reach the arms wide. We'll hold here. Reach the fingers as wide as you can, opening through the chest and roll each hip back in space, opening across the pelvis. A couple breaths, Virabhadrasana two. Gaze is soft and steady. With your next inhale, flip both palms, bring the palms toward the shoulders, and then push the shoulders back in space, like your server holding trays here. Squeeze shoulder blades together. One more inhale. Exhale, reach the arms wide, and then reverse the warrior, right arm over the ear. Inhale, back to warrior two. Exhale, cartwheel the hands, step back to down dog. Option to flow with me on the breath or hold down dog between sides. If you're flowing, inhale forward to plank. Exhale, lower. Inhale for your heart opener. Exhale, up and back. We'll all meet in Adho Mukha Svanasana. From your down dog, inhale, left leg back. Exhale, look forward, step through for warrior two. Inhale to rise, reach the arms wide. Exhale, deep bend in that left knee and breathe. Soften your drishti, your gaze over the left middle finger. Tuck your tailbone, opening across the hips. With your next inhale, flip both palms and then draw palms towards shoulders. Squeeze shoulder blades together and back and breathe. One more inhale here. Exhale, reach the arms and then reverse the warrior. Left arm over the ear. Inhale back to warrior two. Exhale, cartwheel the hands, frame your front foot, and step back to down dog. Adho Mukha Svanasana. We're moving towards seated pigeon, so you'll want your blocks or blanket nearby. Inhale, right leg up and back. Exhale, right knee to right wrist. Straighten that left leg back and come to sit tall. For most of us, the right hip will be pretty far off the mat. So using either your block or a blanket at the right thickness for you, slide that under the outer edge of the right hip so you can square off your hip bones here. From there, walk your hands back in space and lift up through the spine so you're not collapsing into the lower back. Belly is active and you can stay right here. To move towards sleeping pigeon, take an inhale, chest up. Exhale, walk both hands forward, either lowering to forearms, or maybe walking hands all the way forward, lowering forehead toward the mat. If you notice that you tilted left or right, re-square your hips. And with each exhale, feel that right heel come a little closer to the left hip bone. We'll hold here several deep Ujjayi breaths. With 
With your next inhale, walk both hands back in if you folded and come back to sit tall. You can stay right here the last few rounds of breath for a deeper back bend variation. Option to explore bending that left knee, pointing toes toward the head and plant the right palm in front. Reach the left arm back, catch inside the foot or ankle. And if you find that fine, pull the foot toward the body as you kick the foot to the hand. Maybe the foot slides to the elbow crease. Option to reach the right arm back, catching fingers, and then turning gaze over that back left shoulder. Wherever you're at, a couple deep breaths, in and out through the nose. Take one more inhale. Exhale, extend that back leg, plant both hands, and step back to three-legged dog, right leg high. Take circles through the right hip, ringing out that tingling sensation, and then meeting back in downward facing dog. Option for a flow on your breath here, or hold a resting shape between sides. Use your breath to guide what you need. And if you did find a flow, we'll all meet back Adho Mukha Shvanasana. With an inhale, left leg up and back. Exhale, left knee to left wrist, right leg straight back for your sleep, for your seated pigeon pose. Walk both hands outside the hips and then come to sit tall. Use that block or blanket at the right height for you, right outside your left hip. And when you feel your hip bones pointing forward, walk the hands back, lift up through the spine as you sink into that right hip. If you found sleeping pigeon on the first side, take an inhale, chest up. Exhale, walk the hands forward and find your edge. Ekapada Raja Kaputasana, one-footed king pigeon pose. With each exhale, feeling forehead and chest come a little closer to the ground. Then you can press the top of your right foot down, walking that leg back, deepening the opening through your right hip. We'll hold here a few deep Ujjayi breaths. If you fold it with an inhale, walk the hands back in, come back to sit tall. And you can stay right here for the back bend variation. Option to bend the right knee, foot toward the head, and plant the left palm in front of the body. From there, reach the right arm back. If you catch the foot or ankle, pull the foot towards you as you kick the hand. Maybe the foot slides to the elbow crease as you reach the left arm back, interlacing fingers and turning gaze over the right shoulder. A couple breaths to explore your variation. Take one more inhale. Exhale, release. Plant both palms and we'll step back to three-legged dog, left foot high. And take a couple circles with the hip, ringing it out. And we'll meet back in Adho Mukha Shunasana. Option for one more flow here, or simply make your way to a seat. If you're flowing, imagine you're moving through something viscous like honey, slowing down your movement, building strength. And if you're still in your down dog shape, two options to come to seated. You can simply lower to the knees, or if you're working on a float through practice, bring your blocks to the top outer edges of your mat so your arms are a little wider than normal down dog. 
plant the palms firmly and take an inhale up on the toes. Exhale, engage your bandhas, lift the knees and hop, maybe landing on the feet. I'll leave space to try this a few times. If you're working on the full float through, take an inhale up on the toes, gaze forward. Exhale, hop, shoot the feet through and come to sit tall. Option to try that once more if you like. And eventually we're all coming to a seat on the mat. When you find your seat, open the legs wide, bring the hands behind the hips and roll your shoulders down and back. Flex your toes toward the body and then bring hands in front, holding yourself in the core and back body. With an inhale, reach both arms high. Exhale, right forearm to right thigh, left arm up and over the ear. If the left shoulder collapsed, roll it back. Pari Vritta Janushirshasana, revolved head to knee variation. Option to slide the right arm inside that right leg. That'll really deepen the stretch through the left side. So make sure your heart doesn't collapse. Maybe your fingers come all the way to catch your right toes. Maybe not. One more inhale, wherever you're at. Exhale, drop the gaze, walk both hands forward and fold. Inhale, half lift, flat back. Exhale, fold. Focus on pulling the top of the head forward in space and pulling the belly in and up rather than trying to press the face toward the floor. If you have the space, catch the big toes with the first two fingers. Use this to pull the sternum forward, create space between the vertebrae, and then let the head and neck relax. With your next inhale, sit all the way up. Exhale here. Inhale, sweep the arms high. Exhale, left arm to left thigh, right arm up and over the ear for a side bend. Keep those toes flexed, roll the right shoulder back and breathe. Pari Vritta Janu Shirshasana. If you have the space, option to slide left arm inside the left leg, walking fingers toward the foot, and really reach through right fingers. Maybe fingers find the foot, deepening the side bend. Take one more inhale. Exhale, fold forward once more. Walk your hands as far forward as you can, lengthen the spine, and then release the head and neck. Run the tongue over the teeth, softening the jaw. With your next inhale, walk both hands back in, and then use the hands to lift the feet, planting the feet in front of you. We're moving toward the back, but we'll take Navasana boat pose to get there. Feet together, legs together, hands under the thighs. With an inhale, chest up, shoulders down and back. Exhale, rock the weight back, and then lift the feet 90 degrees. If this is too intense, you can keep toes on the mat. For more intensity, straighten through the legs, extending arms alongside the body. Keep lifting through the chest, rolling shoulders back. Navasana boat. We're making our way toward the back, eventually straightening legs, moving through full boat, holding here a couple of breaths, gaze at the feet. And when you've had enough, simply lower all the way to the back body. Let that go. Draw the soles of the feet together, and we'll come back to Supta Baddha Konasana. Option to use the blocks if you like, 
Otherwise, keep the blocks to the side for a bit of a deeper opening through the hips. Walk the heels toward the perineum and bring both hands to the belly. Tuck your chin, lengthening the back of the neck. We'll take about five deep breaths here. Slowing down your ujjayi pranayama. Good, and use your hands to lift your knees, plant your feet, hips distance apart, knees right over ankles. We're moving toward bridge pose. Two options, if you have a block, you can make this restorative, sliding the block under the sacrum when we lift the hips. Otherwise, making this active without the block. Arms alongside the body, take an inhale, lift the hips up, and then begin to walk the shoulder blades together. If you have the space, you can clasp the hands under the body. Whether you have the block or not, make sure the knees don't roll out, stacking them over ankles. Each inhale lifts the hips and chest, keeping the jaw and face relaxed here. Setu Bandhasana. You can stay right here for a leg variation, press through the left foot, and with an inhale, send the right sole of the foot toward the ceiling and hold for a breath or two. With your next exhale, lower the right foot. Inhale, lift the left foot up. Leg is active and strong. With your next exhale, lower the left foot. Take one more inhale and bridge. And on the exhale, slowly lower. Coming down to the back, let the knees gently rest against one another. Take a couple of cleansing breaths here. With your next inhale, send the soles of the feet back up for Ananda Balasana, happy baby. Catching outside feet or legs, keeping head and shoulders on the mat and finding stillness for straightening through one leg and then the other. Option to catch the big toes with the first two fingers and thumb and straighten through both legs, feeling the lower back release toward the mat. Take one more deep inhale. And on the exhale, release. Plant the feet back, hips distance apart. We're moving toward a spinal twist. Extend the arms wide, palms down. You can keep legs together or for a deeper hip stretch, option to cross right leg over left, Garudasana eagle legs before we twist. Either way, inhale, knees to the chest. Exhale, send the knees up and over to the left and roll to the left side. Maybe turning gaze to the right hand. And you can use your blanket or block if the knees are lifted and you're feeling any tension. Settling in here. Jatara Parivartanasana, reclined spinal twist. It's a good time to shut down the eyes. Begin to lengthen and deepen the breath. With your next inhale, draw the knees into the chest, uncross the legs if they're crossed, and plant the feet back, hips distance apart. If you took that leg variation on the first side, cross the left leg over the right, 
for Garudasana legs. Take an inhale, draw the knees to the chest. Exhale, knees up and over to the right. Gaze to the left. And then slide a blanket or block under or between your knees as you need. Begin to settle in once more, shutting down the eyes. Continuing to lengthen your ujjayi breath as you start to use your breath to cool the body down, to calm and quiet the mind. With your next inhale, draw the knees back in, uncross the legs if they cross, and then draw the knees to the chest, taking any intuitive movements, rocking and rolling left and right. We're making our way toward our Shavasana shape for final rest. I'll leave space here for the next 10 or 15 rounds of breath for any other asanas, postures that are calling to you, or if you're simply ready to lie on your back, you can make your way there now. Wherever you're at, finding any clothing or props you'd like to have for Shavasana. And taking notice of any new sensations, qualities in the mind, in the physical body, in the energetic body. Tuning in to the effects of your practice today. Over the next few rounds of breath, make your way toward your Shavasana shape. We did a lot of hip opening today. You're welcome to take traditional Shavasana, legs straight forward. If you'd like to keep opening the hips gently in our final rest, you can grab your blocks, bring the soles of the feet together, draw the heels toward the perineum, and slide your blocks outside the legs just as we began our practice. And when you find the whole back body on the mat, let the arms extend alongside the body, palms up, tuck your chin gently, Tuck your shoulder blades a little closer together. And then shut down the eyes if they're not already. Feel the eyes sink into the sockets. If the knees are bent, feel the hips relax out to left and right. We'll take a body scan to relax and release the whole body as we move into Shavasana. I'll say a part of the body. When I say that part, contract it, focus on it, and then let it relax. We'll begin with top of the head, the forehead, the eyebrows and eyes, the nose and cheeks, both ears, the lips, the teeth, the tongue. Let the tongue go from the top of the mouth. The throat, letting your ujjayi breath go. Keep the breath moving through the nose, but let it grow shallow. Both collarbones and tops of the shoulders. The chest, heart center. Biceps and triceps. The solar plexus right below the lower ribs the navel, both hips and the lower back, 
the pelvic floor. Quads and hamstrings. Wrists and ankles. And finally, contracting all 10 fingers, all 10 toes, and let the extremities release and relax. Enjoying that sensation of sukha ease that comes after sthira effort. Knowing you put in the effort and all that's left to do is hold this shape of integration for the mind, the physical body, and the energetic body. Let my voice and cues grow soft and distant. Disconnecting from sensations in the physical space around you. And simply hold yourself here in Shavasana, corpse pose. Aum Sahana Bhavatu Sahana Bunahtu Saha Viryam Karavavahai Tejas Vinavadhika Mastuma Virvishavahai Aum Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Use your next inhale to deepen the breath. Once more, drawing breath into the belly and letting it go. Begin to wiggle fingers and toes. Gently roll the neck left and right, 
yes and no. In your own time, find a full body stretch, reaching the arms overhead, reinvigorating fingers to toes. Enjoy the sensation of coming back to your body. Eventually draw in the knees and find the fetal shape on the right side body, giving your Nadi energy channels a chance to adjust before we bring head back above heart. When you're ready to rise, press your way to a seat. And come back to sit tall, shoulders back. Shut down the eyes. And with an inhale, bring palms to heart center. Anjali Mudra. Thumbs to heart, heart to thumbs. Thank you so much for joining in this practice today. The light within me honors and respects the light within each of you. Thank you. Mil gracias. Great to be here with you all. And if you'd like to make a donation in support of my donation-based yoga, you can do so through PayPal or Venmo to Freelancer PhD. F R E E L A N C E R P H D. But either way, feel welcome to take my on demand YouTube classes and my donation based Zoom classes, whether you can donate or not. Thank you so much.